I'm often asked, so what is theory of constraints? Well, in this video, I'm going to just share what is a theory, what is a constraint, and why is it important and useful to any of you out there, whether you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or manager of a for-profit or non-for-profit, and then uh, how can you apply it and what are some of the complications? So first of all, what is a theory? In science, a theory is anything that is just a good explanation of why, why something specific is important and useful. So when you hear theory of constraints, what you should expect is an answer, a simple explanation of why knowledge of a constraint in a system is very useful and important. And there's basically five reasons is if you don't know what the constraint in the system is, if you don't know what limits the performance of the whole system, how do you set goals? Secondly, if you don't know where the constraint in the system is, the weakest link, how do you determine what the impact of any change will be on the system? Thirdly, as if you don't know what, where the constraint is of the system, the one thing that's limiting you from achieving more of the goals, how do you know where to focus your limited resources, your limited attention, your limited budget, your limited time? And the last two reasons why knowledge of a constraint is important is if you don't know where the constraint is, you don't really know what the rules are to optimize the system, else you're going to fall into the trap of local optimizing. It turns out that the rules that you need to optimize the constraint of any system also optimizes the whole system. And then the last thing why it's really important is if you don't know where the constraint is uh, and when a constraint moves, you don't know when to change the rules. So that's just very briefly about why knowledge of a constraint is so important. It helps us to set goals, helps us to determine the impact of any change on the whole system, helps us to decide where to focus, helps to, us to decide what rules to use, and lastly, when to change the rules. So what is a constraint? Well, if you think about a system, a company, an organization has a specific goal, as soon as you define the goal, what you want to achieve by when for who, it determines what resources are needed in order to deliver that goal. As soon as you know the resources and the goal, you know the demand that that goal will place on the resources. Any resource that does not have enough capacity or availability to meet the demand that's placed on it, it's a constraint. If you think about your organization or maybe your business, where can a constraint be? Well, you could have a situation where you don't have enough demand to meet the goal that you've set for yourself. So there's not enough customers wanting your product or service to meet the demand. That's a market constraint. You could also have an operations constraint or capacity constraint. You have enough demand, but you don't have enough capacity to meet the demand in order to meet the goal that you've set for yourself, whether that's a, a for-profit goal or for-purpose goal. If it's not operations or the market, where else can it be? It could be a supply constraint. There's something that you need to produce your product or service in order to meet the demand, and you don't have enough of that. It could be raw materials. It could be skills. It could be some other resource, an external resource. And in the last part, it, it could be cash. You just don't have enough cash to buy the materials or resources that you need to be able to produce enough of the product or service to meet the demand, which in turn will help you to meet your goal. So that's essentially the four places where you could have a constraint either in the market or inside of your operations or on the supply or cash. Now, resources don't wake up in the morning and say, I want to be a bottleneck. I want to be a constraint. So how did I become constraints? And that's where the, maybe the counterintuitive part comes in is that the ultimate constraint is the fact that we have limited attention as owners, as managers. So our limited management attention can cause resources to become a constraint. What theory of constraints provides us with is a very simple focusing process. It's called the five focusing steps that helps us to apply this. So it assumes that you've already set a goal for your system. Defining the goal, I call it step zero. If you don't have a goal, then guess what's the one thing that you need to do is to get a very clear goal, what you want to achieve, by when, for who. Once you've done that at step zero, then it's identify the system constraint. Is it the market? Is it operations? Is it supply or cash? Step two says, well, decide how to better exploit and not waste this constraint. So if you think about if it's a market, that's the size of the market that's the problem. You don't have enough customers. Have a look at what's the potential. You might only have 1% of the current market. There's 99% available. So think about the conditions that if you could satisfy them will give you more. And make also sure that you don't waste the 1% that you've got. If your constraint is capacity, do the same thing. Is check how much of your capacity is actually used to produce products and services that customers want now. And the first thing to do is to stop wasting capacity producing stuff 
stuff that's not needed now. That will release a lot of capacity that you can then deploy. The same thing with supply. Make sure you don't over-purchase. And the same with caches. Make sure you don't waste cash. So that's what step two is about, is deciding how to better exploit this constraint. Is first make sure you don't waste it by over-producing, over-purchasing, over-supplying, etc. Step three is where you are translating that decision of deciding how to better exploit and not waste into operational changes. So subordinate everything to that decision on how to better exploit. That essentially means looking inside saying, are there any policies or measurements or behaviors that's in conflict with this decision of how to better exploit? So for example, if we have a market constraint, we don't want customers to wait too long for them to be served. So if we have an internal policy that we only take orders once a month, for example, it's an extreme case, then that policy is in direct conflict because now we're forcing customers to wait a month before we even start supplying them. So think about step three, subordinating everything to, to the decision on to better exploit the constraint. Is really just thinking about, is there anything in this, that we are doing, any policy measurement or behavior that's in conflict with that decision? And if so, we need to change it. Step four says, well, if you've done that, you've probably have increased your throughput of the whole system. The system is now performing better because you've released some, some available potential out of your constraint. You're either getting more demand, you're getting more capacity, more supply, you have more cash available. That, if you address the right constraint, your goal unit should go up, but it will probably hit some kind of plateau and then you'll get stuck again. So what do you do then? That step four is to elevate the system constraint. That's where you go and get more. So if it's a market constraint, go and add additional products or take your existing products going to new markets pick the one that is the lowest cost lowest risk for you if it's internal and operations go and buy an additional machine or appoint additional salespeople or drivers or wherever the constraint is internally the same with the supply side go and find another supplier or if it's cash go and find another source of cash another bank another investor that's what step four is about step five is really making sure that inertia doesn't become your constraint so if you've broken a constraint in a previous step, go back to step one, circle back to step one and make sure uh, you go and identify the next constraint. So that's how you practically apply it. And you can apply that to the whole business or you can apply it to just your part of the of the businesses. Where is your constraint internally? Is it a demand problem? Is it a capacity problem? Is it a supply problem? Is it a cash problem or funding problem or donation problem? Well, how can it be a little bit more complicated? And that's where it might be counterintuitive, but when you speak to uh, an entrepreneur and they are overwhelmed, they're stressed out, it normally means that they are in a system that's become chaotic. So what is a chaotic system? A chaotic system is literally just one where there's more than one constraint and worst case, these constraints are interacting. So if you've set a goal and you say, I don't have enough customers, I don't have enough capacity to meet the goal, I don't have enough supply and I don't have enough cash, guess what? You have a chaotic system. It's impossible to manage such a system. You can't make any reliable uh, predictions about what you can achieve, you don't know where to focus, you can't determine the impact of any changes, you don't know what rules to use, you don't know when to change the rules, it's absolute chaos. So if you find yourself in that situation that you have more than one resource that you just don't have enough of to meet the goal, what is the best possible option? Counterintuitively, it's reduce your goal up to the point where you have only one constraint. We say, I now have enough capacity, enough supply, enough, enough cash, but I just don't have enough demand. Okay, so that's the one thing. Focus on just getting enough demand up to the point and then I can increase my goal a little bit and then see where the next constraint is. So I hope that was useful. That's essentially the short answer in about 10 minutes of what is theory of constraints. A theory is simply a good explanation about why something is important and useful. And knowledge of a constraint is really important and useful when it because it helps us as owners, as managers to set goals, to decide the impact of change on the whole system, to decide where to focus, decide what rules to use, decide when to change the rules. Secondly is what is a constraint? It's simply any resource that you don't have enough of in order to meet the goal that you've set. How do I make sure I have enough of everything is I can follow the five focusing steps, identify the constraint, decide how to better exploit it or not waste it, subordinating everything, elevating if it's still not enough, or if there's multiple things I don't have enough of, actually reduce your goal first. Bring down the demand that you're placing on yourself and other resources. Make sure you don't 
do things that are not needed, not needed now. Make sure you're not trying to serve customers that are not your, your dream customers. Those are a very practical way of getting out of chaos. If you think that this video is valuable, please like it and, and share it. And if you have any questions, please share those in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you.